Major Reed, uh, before we lead into our first trivia question, uh, we talked about this and uh, have seen them. Uh, actually saw, uh, my buddy saw a fawn in his front yard, wasn't much bigger than a schnauzer. I mean, it was <laughs> just been born. I yeah. mean, it was just amazing. And it's that time of the year right now. It is. Especially if you're about thinking about going out and bush hogging, something like that. You might want to really, really yeah. think hard about that right now because they could be nesting in a food plot. They could be nesting anywhere. Yeah, I mean, if you're bush hogging right now, it's been a couple months since you've done it anyway. Wait a couple more weeks. Give them a little chance to be on their feet running around. It is that time of year. And, again, we uh, want to remind the listeners that leave them alone. Don't mess with them. Don't try to go in there and scoop them up and rescue them and rehab them and all that good stuff because that's nature's way of carrying on and reproducing. And so the mother leaves the fawn. They watch you as you take the fawn in your vehicle to the rehab place and you break the mother's heart. And then you got a doe that has now died from a broken heart. And Plus I mean, you're breaking the law. Yeah. Big time. And then, yeah. Right. And so, you know, once you get that deer acclimated to human conditions and people are like, well, just go take it and put it back in the wild. Well, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. There's you know. a book written about this called The Yearling in case you're wondering oh, how it's going to go. Yeah, yeah, a few readers out there. But, yeah, so don't just just leave them alone. That's the simplest. It may, it may hurt not, your heart not a just bit. a baby deer either. It, it's all wildlife. We yeah. had a, we had Birds, a little baby hawks. mockingbird hanging out in the bush in the backyard this mm-hmm. weekend so you know sometimes those fall out of the bush yeah just let it let it take its course yeah it'll be all right and when we say that we don't mean that they're going to perish we mean they're going to figure it out be on their way and then well, if, i mean that's if they do they do that's, that's part the, of it too that's the fawn's best chance of survival yeah. is for the mother to get away from it mm-hmm. bed it down and make it stay there, and then she gets away from it and uh, until it gets where it can get up and defend itself and run from predators. And that takes us to our first trivia question there, Adam. Here we go. Mm-hmm. I, I think this is really neat. Did you know that deer fawns can actually reduce their heart rate when approached by predators? I, thought, I think this is really cool. So, you know, Baby fawns, you know, they're, 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 they're eaten by a lot of different predators out there, and their natural defense, as we're talking about, is to just remain motionless, right? They don't, they don't move, and they also don't give off a lot of scent. Part of that is because the doe is constantly licking them and kind of cleaning up the, the different glands and things like that. But if they're approached by a predator, they normally have a heart rate of about 175 beats a minute, which is pretty, pretty high metabolism. They can drop that by about 70% if approached by a predator. So you say, why would you do that? Well, if you have a lower heart beat rate, lower heart rate, you need less oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to breathe, you're breathing less, so you're not breathing as much. And if you're not breathing as much, you're not putting out as much scent. So the coyote that is coming near has a harder time smelling you. And for them to know and to sense the animal coming is another trait that's pretty neat for them to even know that. Yeah, to, yeah, you know, to to be aware so it, of that. It's like a little defensive mechanism against yeah. predation that the fawn has. It actually, it it physiologically changes the heart rate drops in the present. So you think about it, that's like the opposite. Like if you, JT, if you were laying in the bushes and a wolf came trotting by, I bet your heart rate would probably go up. But they, yeah, they do the exact opposite. That's pretty cool to to yeah. think about that, yeah. mm-hmm. and that 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 is part of. Uh, part of it that is done there. All right, we got to go quick. We got a lot to do here. Yeah. So, uh, who wants to go down number two? Well, you about turkeys. Yeah. Oh, well, I All guess right. we'll have so to leave that one. Here, here's another. Here. Here's another. Did you know? Did you know that wild turkey hens? All right. So you got during the spring, the whole mating season, you know, and the gobblers are strutting and all that. Um, the hens are actually able to look at the different gobblers and sort of pick their mate based on how many parasites the gobbler has. So they can sort of look at they could look at Chris and say, "Oh, he's carrying a lot of parasites. He is probably not who I want to mate with." They probably say, he and looks they, nasty." Yeah, yeah, he looks nasty. They do that. This is really interesting. They do that. There's several different ways. So um, birds in general can see a little bit more into the ultraviolet light spectrum than than we can. Oh yeah. And gobblers who have a low parasite load actually reflect more ultraviolet light so they're able to look and see that and so it's in, in like in my mind the way i think of it is like he's you know 
you're giving off like an aura like a, well, a gobbler that doesn't have a lot of parasites is giving you. off a, a little bit of an aura so. what what in the world does that even matter if they got <laughs> well parasites? i would you know i would assume if does you're, that transfer to a like a successful well you know turkeys are not kids. very good they're not good daddies you know they don't they don't help raise the young so if you're a hen you want to at least you know if you a got, healthy kid yeah you want a healthy kid you want a kid that doesn't a have a sick one right right so it's sort of it's sort of like having a cologne on i guess huh Huh. There you For go. The male turkey. Yeah. Hey, I'm healthy. Wild turkey. This, that's interesting stuff. That was actually some uh, research that was done uh, at Ole Miss uh, by Dr. Rich, Richard Buckles. He was checking out why hens might would choose a gobbler. So hmm. I thought that's interesting. And it leads them to get less likely in a fight with another male. They do. They do. That's the other thing he found out. So they, were, they took a bunch of turkeys, put them in a pen, and were able to do all these different trials about, you know, kind of who likes who and why. And um, in addition to. Uh, the low parasite load being a deciding factor in how a hen picks a mate, it, it also was able to predict whether or not another male, another gobbler, would want to fight with you. So if I look at Chris and I say he doesn't have a lot of parasites, that means he's probably pretty healthy. I don't want to pick a fight with him. Cool how about stuff. That? Yeah. There All right. Go. What about uh, let's go and talk about hummingbirds. And uh, Nicole, you might I know you are into birds and things like that. I like birds. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so I didn't realize this, but hummingbirds fly nonstop across the Gulf of Mexico. That's true, and they'll shed about half their body weight in the course of that migration time. Well, too. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, burning calories the whole time. No food. Wonder how long it takes them. Yeah, it's the ultimate CrossFit experience. I think they do it in a, in, in a <laughs> night. Cross, Mo- yeah. Mostly, it's a, it's a, it's usually overnight. overnight. Yeah, they fly overnight. They wait till a, they get a Come like, on, northern wind and take off with the wind at their back. It's I mean, like an airplane make it fly yeah. overnight. And it's not just hummingbirds. Bird. A lot of other different songbirds do that too. They they come here to you know spend the spend the spring and summer and then. Um, go down to south america central so america is that kind of why mississippi sees a big uptick like maybe the last bit of land before they make the big yeah it actually is mississippi is like a, a the, major stopover place for a fuel lot of birds yeah. several of the um you know the birding groups will go to the coast when they're the birds are expected back and so they're waiting for them to make landfall oh. um miss cook who was uh, the museum's founder and the department's founder she used to make an annual trip uh, to the coast and she would get in a boat and she would take it out on the water and she would have uh, food available for you know nectar for the the hummingbirds and they would kind of rest on her boat what? on the oh, way in because cool. some of them might be just a little too tired to make it that last bit oh, yeah. so what it's time of year does that thing. take place they they will be coming in in uh like april April from south yeah. america yeah yeah and then they'll be headed back late september early october and they're different species of hummingbirds too uh-huh. so like you get the allen's hummingbird so it's you know it's migration time might be a little different yeah. than some like something like your ruby throats uh and normally it's i think early september is when you're going to see like a a big influx a of it. it's going to be the fall main coming yeah late late august early september you're going to see a lot of extra traffic so if you put nectar out at your uh why well, i call it nectar um uh, the fluid that the sugar water yeah. fluid out at your feeders you're really helping out okay um i've noticed I'm, a big uptick yeah, the past couple like, of weeks like really late in august and september i guess they're fueling up you, it, like they get so fat and it's slow yeah. almost they're just kind of like and, and there's like, always a bully yeah. out there yeah. trying oh, to bully yeah. all the other hummingbirds yeah. they're, out. They're incredibly territorial. You know, I kind of joke that nectar's like Red Bull for the hummingbirds because it's <laughs> it's not really their food of choice. It's just one of them. Energy. Like, yeah, they eat um, very small insects, like primarily, and then they use the nectar as like a little extra, you know, hydration mm. and fuel along the way. And not only are they crazy territorial around these things, they will um, how to describe it they're thugs you know they kind of beat up on each other and chase other birds away and they come back to the same feeders year after year Hmm. like um i was out working in the garden the other day and i heard chitting does that little noise that they make up in the in the trees and i'm like oh i need to go check my feeder and sure enough it was empty they knew (laughs) and i'm like okay i'll go get it so i made up fresh solution and put it out for them real quick on the ceasefire text line uh gotten uh gotten uh uh, quite a conversation with some of the old men at the coffee shop and said that they don't have to the the supplemental feed ban does not apply to private lands in the cwd zones 
uh, they are absolutely 100% wrong. Well, those coffee shop discussions sometimes are entertaining, but may not be completely factual. If you are in a CWD uh, yeah. management Private, zone, you, public, cannot, so you cannot feed, nada. period. And a game warden is not trespassing when he comes on your private land. He has every right to do right. that. Yeah, so that's and not he can, true. He can check you. He can yeah. check you. So uh, you might want to pass that along and hate for him to get a ticket. Uh, folks, I'm, we're not going to waste a lot of time on this. Uh, I'm getting a lot of texts in here. They're saying that if you're in a CWD management zone, mm-hmm. okay, okay, they're on the website. Yep. You cannot feed deer. You cannot feed anything. You can have a hog trap, but you have to have that permitted as well. That's private right. lands, public lands, and if a game warden comes on your private property to check you, sir, it is not trespassing, okay? I'm trying to address this because I'm trying to let this get out of the way. Am I correct on this? No feeding whatsoever in the CWD zones. You are correct. Okay. Private lands, don't matter if you own the deed or anything, okay, folks? They're trying to stop the spread of this disease. All right, let's get back to it. In fact, somebody had a question about armadillos a while back and really? said, uh, uh, do armadillos carry leprosy? I've always been told that they do. I believe that is correct, yeah. yes. I've always been yes. told that they do, but there's also something else you have interesting about an so armadillo. Here's one of, our, one of our facts of the day. Armadillos always have quadruplets. And the entire litter will be of the same sex. How about that? Really? Yeah. They're always going to have all boys or all girls, and there's always going to be four of them. And if they get in a panic, they'll turn into a ball and bounce <laughs> like a basketball. Right, right, yeah. right, right. That's their, that's their defense. They give you leprosy all the same time. Yeah. All right, let's do a couple on waterfowl. Yeah. All right, let's so go. Here's, here's some cool stuff. So wood ducks, you know, wood ducks nest in the spring, but they can also kind of continue on in the summer. Wood ducks can raise two broods in a single summer. They're the only north american waterfowl that can do that so wood ducks primarily are nesting kind of in the south you know most of the rest of our ducks are nesting in you know the upper uh, great plains in canada uh, thanks to our long growing season here they have time to start pretty early wood ducks can start nesting some of them as early as february pull off one group get them all raised up kick them out of the house and then start it all over again in the same summer so that allows for a really high reproductive rate um, and and again they're one of the they are the only duck species that can do that um, we banned a lot of wood ducks here in the state jt mm-hmm. um, so that's something that our our staff has ongoing right now as a matter of fact this is the time of year where we're doing that and uh, some of our wood ducks that we ban here, it's primarily going to be wood ducks if we're banning them here in the summer. Uh, some of those get harvested pretty long way away. It, it, some of our birds that we have banded here have been taken as far away as southern Canada, parts of Ontario. Wow. Yeah. And usually long what that'll be. South Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. So usually what that'll be is you get a, you get a northern hen that comes down to spend the winter, and uh-huh. then one of our local born males, southern boys, yeah, kind of meets up with her and they become friends and they, he just follows her back to wherever she came from and yeah. kind of spends the summer Sounds like a there. Disney so, movie. Yep, yep. All right, more trivia, JT. Here we go. While we're talking about waterfowl, did mm. you know that mallards have been tracked as far as 800 miles in one single flight? Come so on. they take off. That's right. And before they put their feet back down, they have traveled 800 miles. That is why people listening in the world, you go hunting any day that you can because they might not have been here yesterday. But they may have flew 800 miles in one night. And show, here they are. You know, you hear it all the time during duck season. They're like, they just came, they just showed up, and we killed a limit. Have you, have you ever heard of that deal about if a duck has orange feet? He yeah. Just, he just migrated. You That's heard completely that false. Yeah. Yeah. That's, true. That's old wives' tale. I've never heard you get that. there in like January, JT, and these guys will. They'll shoot a big old green head and bring it back. Dog will bring it back, and his feet will be like neon orange. They'll be like, yeah, these are new ducks. They just got here, just flew in. They hadn't, because they believe that um, that they've been standing around. If they've been here for a long time, they've been in the mud, the, the soybean fields and rice fields, and their feet's gotten dirty. Mm-hmm. But if they've been flying 800 miles overnight, they uh, they got clean feet when they get here, and their blood's been pumping. They've been standing on the ice up north, and it makes their feet pump the blood to their feet and make them real orange but all that is just good just stories good duck blind stories that uh, unfortunately are not scientifically based hey how about this though this this is true okay even though mallards have been shown to fly 800 miles in one single migratory event they don't hold the record for that the black brant which is a goose that lives on the west coast flies the pacific flyway 
get this, JT. They, can, they, they, they breed in Alaska, and they can take off flying and fly 3,000 miles before they sit down. One single flight. They're going to go from their breeding grounds in Alaska all the way to where they spend the winter down in, in uh, Mexico in the Baja Peninsula. 3,000 miles. They do it nonstop. Takes them about 72 hours. That's unreal. Mm. I didn't know that. I had no idea. Of the ducks that come through here, uh, blue winged teal, which you know we get usually in September, get them really yeah, early. Yeah, they'll be leaving here shortly. Yeah, yeah. We're actually probably already getting a, a few of them. You see a few of those trickle in during mm-hmm. during late July, but bulk of them are going to come through in September. They have the record for the longest migration of of any waterfowl species in North America. So they seven thousand mile migration what they do now they don't do it all in one flight they're gonna you know little by little but when they leave you know they're breeding upper u.s canada uh and some of them will go as far south as argentina which is seven thousand miles you would think like there's got to be plenty of opportunity between canada and argentina to hang out for the winter you if like, you're going that far like they're spending like the bulk of the like? year in migration right like, but they are seeing the world they they're are. world travelers they are makes you want like do they have a you know they so have you, like a south you, american accent or a, or a well, US yeah accent. i mean who yeah. knows <laughs> who maybe a canadian i mean right but right. if you if you get to harvest one of those that you know that bird who knows where it's been literally all right let's talk about wild turkey poults and then get to deer antlers okay turkey poults Here's a trivia on on wild turkey poults. They are growing extremely fast. They can double their body weight um, every week, the first several weeks of their life. They're doubling their body weight. And a group of wild turkeys, they they eat insects to fuel that growth. they got to have their protein in the bugs. And a group of wild turkey poults can eat 4,000 insects in a single day. Woo! That's a lot. Man, who counts all the insects? There's actually some research done in West Virginia. Back in the seventies, I would. I, that's the straw I draw. You get to count the bugs out of their crawl. Deer antlers are the fastest growing bone tissue in the natural world. True, this, this is true. So, in whitetail deer, uh, the antler during this time of the year when it's growing can grow an inch and a half per week, which translates into about a quarter inch a day. In elk, it's even more impressive. An elk, <coughs> an elk antler can grow an inch a day. Wow. It's unbelievable. So fastest growing bony tissue. In, You're checking in your game world. cameras right now. People yeah. are kind of worried about the deer's antler size, but they're, you know, Butler says they grow a quarter inch a day. So, so another thing that they do to, to fuel that, they, they got to have certain micronutrients like, like calcium and phosphorus. They can actually mobilize that from other parts of their skeleton. So you've got, you know, you've got those nutrients in your ribs and, you know, your thigh bone and different things like that. They can kind of take it from one part of the body and transport it to the to the antler that needs it during the, the peak of the growing you season. You making this stuff up? I'm not making it up, man. It's cool sure? stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, we got about a minute left. Uh, you pick whichever one you want to go with last. I'm going to do – so we got we got to do one for, for – Alligators. Uh, Ricky Flint, yeah, for yeah. alligators. So uh, the sex of the alligator embryo, when it's in an egg – is determined by the temperature of the egg. So what alligators do, you know, they don't they don't sit on their nest and incubate it like birds do. They heap a bunch of heap a bunch of you know leaves and and and, and just debris up. And as that stuff starts decaying, it gives off heat. That's how the eggs are incubated. That's how the eggs are kept warm. And the temperature of the eggs, okay. kind of during the middle part of the development, determines the sex of the alligator. So if the temperature inside that nest is all that stuff is kind of decaying down and humid and, and the humidity is giving off and all that if the temperature in there is below 86 degrees all the eggs will be a female alligator if the temperature is above 93 degrees all the eggs will be male alligators and if it's between the two you get sort of a even 50 50 mix all so right there you go well there you go and that uh we'll do a couple of them right there uh for you dan and male turkeys can be distinguished by their gobble yeah, that right? was our that's our last so that's you hear a lot of hunters say that it's actually true. There's been science study that you can, a computer can tell an individual male turkey from another individual male based on the gobble. Cool stuff there, there man. Cool stuff that we learned here today.